Welcome Bitcoin friends, it's Bitcoin Memo. Today we're going to do some long term analysis and we're going to just look at why I think this bull run isn't over. I did just do a live stream but unfortunately the screen was zoomed in and you couldn't see the full chart so I apologize for that. And these shorter videos will show those charts so you can see them. So I just want to start here on this chart. I have talked about this previously in another video. This original idea was done by Trading Shot on TradingView. It just looks at the previous cycles and the time between the bear market lows, the halfening, and the bull market highs. So in this 2013 cycle here, we can see that from the bear market low, this red line, to the halfening date, this white line, it took us 375 days. And from the halfening to the bull market peak, took us 367 days. So approximately 50% of the time in each to make up this whole cycle from the low to the high. And looking at the second cycle, it was a bit longer. But what we also see is it was about a 50 to 50 ratio with this one 542 days and this one 526. And looking at the current cycle, we can see that from the bear market low to the halfening was 512 days and then we've just projected the end of the bull market here to be around 20th of September and this ratio here is just an average between the two so approximately 50-50 as well. This hasn't been updated since we had the pullback but this is just to show the time that I think this bull market will last and I don't think this bull market's over because it's way too early compared to these previous cycles with this 50-50 ratio. And I do just think this is a massive shakeout so that the institutions and the big money can get Bitcoin a lot cheaper. So now I want to compare the 2017 bull run to the current bull run here on the right side. I've just got these FIB extensions drawn here. This is on the logarithmic scale on both charts and... This is the FIB extensions on a log scale using the log setting on that actual indicator. This green line is the halfening date. And what we can see here from the halfening date here, just measured to this pullback that we had in this bull run. And it took us 364 days. And doing the same thing in the current cycle from the halfening to this big pullback, we can see it took 371 days. So a, quite a similar time difference there. And on this 2017 pullback here, you can see we got resistance at the 1.414 level and pulled back to the 1.272 level. And then we did go higher and we came to the 1.618 level and had another pullback. And on this current cycle here, we got similar resistance at the 1.414 level, pulled back to the 1.272 level and went higher to this 1.618 level. But then we have had this bigger pullback all the way back down to the 1.272 level. So we see a similar time difference here, but the pullback was much greater in this cycle. So we were tracking this 2017 bull cycle quite closely, but now I'm looking at the 2013 cycle also, and I am seeing sim similarities between that one and the current cycle. So I think this cycle might be a combination of the previous two together in a way. This one's more similar on a time scale. And in the 2013 bull run is, is similar to this big pullback that we've had here. So we'll just look at that 2013 cycle. So this is the 2013 cycle here on the left. And what we can see is we had this big run up here. We came to the 1.618 level and got a heavy rejection. And it took us below the 1.272 level. And then we bounced and we ranged between the two here. Initially getting support at the 1.414 level. And then pulling back again to the 1.272 level. And looking at the current cycle here. You can see we had a similar run up here. With not, not many pullbacks here. Similar to this cycle. We came to the 1.618 level. And then we've had this big pullback. And we came back to the 1.272 level. Quite similar to this pullback here, not quite as deep, but perhaps this pullback here is a more condensed version of this one. And we have had a pullback somewhere between the two here. But either way, we have closed above the 1.272 level, and that is at around 32,500. And we haven't closed a body of a daily candle below that. 
Now this is on the weekly chart currently. We can see in this cycle here, after this big pullback, we did consolidate for a while here. And then we carried on the bull run and we came to this 2.272 level. And if we were to do a similar thing here, that would take us to around 204,000. And just going back to that 2017 bull run here, we can see we came all the way up to the 2.414 level. So if we were to do that in this cycle, that would take us around 273,000. So I'd be looking for somewhere in this range between 200 and 270,000. And as I said, I think this one's similar on a time scale to the 2017 bull run. This run up here in price action and this big pullback is more similar to the 2013 cycle. Another thing to notice here is we did pull back below this 21 week exponential moving average. And in the initial drop, we did end up coming back up and closing the body of the candle above that moving average. But currently we did have this big drop and we'd have to come all the way back up to 46,000 before that candle closes to get above it. And there's only a few days left in the week. So it's not looking like that's going to happen. But if we do look at the 2013 cycle, we can see also we did close below the 21 week exponential moving average. And then the following week we did come back up, play with this line for a bit and then use it as support as we finish the bull run. So a similar thing might happen here in this cycle. It might take a bit longer. It's not going to be exactly the same. But it is interesting to compare the two. And in this cycle here, people might have thought a similar thing. They might have thought the bull run was over after getting to a price of 270 and pulling back to $65 approximately. And if you did sell here at this pullback, you would have missed out on this run all the way up to $1,100, $1,200. Obviously, this was much bigger gains than I think this cycle will make, but it's all relative using these FIB extension levels based on the previous top and low in the previous bull run. So I'm not selling here down at 30,000. I do think this is going higher to these levels. It's always good to take profits along the way though. Anything can happen with Bitcoin. But I would be looking for this September date, around August, September, and around the 200 to 270,000 level. And just to show that all in one chart here, we can see the levels that we picked out here on the previous two cycles, and the level we're looking for, and the date that we're looking for. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I will keep you up to date on these charts and this long term analysis. Thanks for watching. I'm Bitcoin Ramo. See you next time. Bye. There was one thing I missed out on on that video, so I'll just quickly talk about that. This is the 2013 bull run here. This is the current cycle. And pulling up the RSI, we can see on this big drop here, midway through this cycle, we came down to a 47.94 reading on the RSI. And if we look at the current cycle on this big pullback, we can see that we are pretty much exactly at that line now. And we did a similar thing coming down from a 94 reading down to that level. And on this cycle we were all the way up at a 99 reading. But quite a big pullback here and quite similar to this one.